elderflower mead. Mead, super traditionally British. All it is, is like a honey wine. So when you make wine, you have grapes, right? Grapes have all the sugar. Crush the grapes, add some yeast. What you end up with is wine. Trap the CO2 in there. What you end up with is sparkling wine. Champagne, Cremant, Cava, Prosecco, English sparkling. But speaking of English, we don't have great grapes. We don't have great grapes. We don't have a strong culture of wine. It's getting better, you know, English Pinot Noir, English Chardonnay, fantastic. But traditionally speaking, we were never good winemakers. What can you do, right? We love drinking the stuff, we're never good at making it. But what we was good at is honey. We was good beekeepers. So our version of wine was instead of using grapes, was to use honey. And honey's already full of sugars, as we know. So we, it's much the same process, but instead of grapes, it's honey. And what you end up with is mead. Once again, you can have it still. You can have it sparkling. You can have it low ABV. You can have it high ABV. You can have it sweet. What we've got here is elderflower mead. As I did say in my last video, and do check that out, elderflowers are growing like crazy. So it's a perfect opportunity to grab all of them now, go outside, go forage them, go pick them, and then make yourself some elderflower drinks, cordials, liqueurs, um, gins, champagne, like in my last one, or mead if you want. Now for mead, it's super simple, even easier than the champagne recipe. And I'll leave this recipe in the description so you can just refer back to that. But for every litre of water, and you start with the water, you are going to add two heads of elderflower, half a lemon, both zest and juice, and then honey. I think for this one I added 150 grams of honey, but it can range. The more honey you put in, the more dry it will be at the end. Ironically, the higher alcohol it will be because there's more sugar for the yeast to eat. I go with 150 grams. I think I did check the description just to make sure that I'm correct on here. This is five liters, so I just times that whole thing by five, and I added it all in here. The elderflower, the elderflower that's in there is full of natural yeast, so that should be enough to kickstart the fermentation. Issue we are running, same with the champagne, there wasn't enough yeast on the elderflower, the fermentation didn't kickstart. So what we do in that case, you pick up some dry yeast, and then you add it in. We're waking it up here. This is dry yeast and water. Gave it a little bit of a stir and we're going to add a little bit in the top. So we'll add a bit in here. This is what it looks like currently. It's been two days. It should be moldy. It should be fermenting. It should be bubbly, but it's not. So to help it along, we have some yeast. I'm not going to add this whole thing because this is for the champagne as well. So this is 50 millilitres of yeast and water. I'm going to add just about 10 in here. Hopefully that'll be enough to wake it up. There we go. That should be enough to now do its thing. In about one or two days, this should be bubbling. This will be going like crazy. It'll be burping. It'll be making the most wonderful noise of just every, every five minutes, five, ten minutes, you should be hearing a bloop, bloop, bloop. And it should be getting a lot cloudier, it should be getting a lot more moldy, and that's how we know it's doing its work. If it's not, what if it's not and it still hasn't kick-started that fermentation? Well, you know what? I'm going to get even more yeast. They come in packages like this. This is not the one I added, this is a different one, but this is what comes in packages like that. I'll add more yeast in there, and I'll add some yeast nutrients, which you can also buy, and that should help kick-start it. But basically, we're just going to keep adding yeast and forcing it until this wonderful thing does something. You, it's very experimental, you can change it as you go along, but that's the basic of it. We'll give it a little stir to get everything moving, to get the motion going. And there we go, if you're curious to see what to do next, do check in in about five days, yeah about five days, and that's when I'll update you on what it looks like and how the mead is coming along.